we can break ah selamat datang fakullah okay so uh, if you apa i would like to change slide now if you haven't uh, submit your attendance tak apa nanti uh, saya akan attach the link ya so before we start i would like to thank uh, all these 23 wonderful people for responding to the um pedek um activity last friday if you haven't the link to the pedek is um still available still open for you you can access it later then um apa as i reflect back from our previous offline session uh, apa before this uh, nak kata apa it takes me some time to uh, provide uh, feedback for you since uh, apa you have to answer on the padded slide and then you have to wait for me to mark your answer and then uh, apa give you proper feedback lah tapi uh, i change a bit my approach last week last week saya gunakan approach uh, most of the slides are uh, apa, uh, apa you can uh, you can self check your answer lah and then you can uh, do it uh, multiple times so that you can increase your understanding atau improve your uh, memory lah but uh, towards the end of last week's session, uh, based on your reflection, ramai juga yang kata dia stress bila saya gunakan train mode untuk one of the activities. So, I will take into account your feedback and I will not use the train mode anymore. Eh? Okay. So, uh, before we start discussing on the earth magnetosphere tu, uh, here is a quick recap of uh, four of the uh, apa phenomenon that is discussed on the uh, on last week's paddock. So can you identify, uh, there are four pictures here, which one is sunspot, which, which one shows solar prominence, solar flare and coronal mass ejection atau CME. Okay, almost there. Uh, siapa lagi yang belum ni? Okay, Nurin Batrisha, Nur Adini dengan Vignesh Warren belum, ya. Yeah. Alright. So, I think uh, sunspot, everyone immediately knows which one is the sunspot. Very good. Okay, kejap ya, saya cek satu-satu dulu. Okay. Hmm, ada lagi yang belum belum submit ke? Let me see. Okay, tinggal witness warrant je. Tak apa. Uh, I know that sometimes you are having internet connection problem. So, it's okay if you take some time. Yeah? Tak apa. Okay, here is a sample answer. Dalam Google Meet sekarang ada sample answer. Thank you Rashdan for your prompt uh, response. Okay, so sunspot semua orang betul. Uh, sunspot tak ada masalah ya. Eh? Sebab senang je nak identify because sunspot is an area appear darker than the surrounding granules kan? From, from the surrounding area. Because it is relatively cooler than other parts of the uh, sun surface. Uh, kenapa kita nampak lebih gelap because sunspot area ni is an area where there are strong magnetic fields. So these magnetic fields prevent some of the heat from the inside of the sun to reach the surface of the sun. So when we observe from outer space, since the heat does not reach the surface, we we can see apa uh, that particular spot is slightly darker lah because less heat emitted from the uh, inside of the sun. Okay, number two is solar prominence. Okay, yang nampak macam gelung tu solar prominence. Number two and then number three is solar flare yang gambar warna hijau tu lah. Kenapa warna hijau? Because it is a UV imaging from na ni semua gambar ni saya ambil daripada NASA website ya. Eh. So, nak dia ambil daripada UV imaging sebab dia nak hide. Sebab 
nak kata apa, the whole part of the sun tu is very bright. So, to identify solar flare tu, nak nak, nak bagi nampak uh, solar flare tu uh, very clear, very visible compared to other parts of the sun, dia gunakan UV imaging lah. So, uh, why I mention solar flare and uh, solar prominence uh, together because Uh, solar flare in general is a sudden explosion of energy that occurs near sunspot uh, and it release a lot of radiation into space. Um, when the magnetic loops near this uh, area, uh, apa mana kata bila solar flare tu uh, ada formation of magnetic loops and the, uh, when there are two magnetic loops combine with each other it will spew high energy plasma uh, dalam bentuk loop so nama dia ialah solar prominence lah so solar flare and solar prominence are related in terms of uh, the uh, apa yang dia spew high energy plasma but difference is uh, solar prominence tu form through the combination of magnetic loop so kita nampak bentuk gelung macam tu ya dekat gambar nombor dua tu uh, and then uh, sometimes the formation of solar flare will be followed by number four coronal mass ejection atau CME. Jadi CME ni kalau kita nampak kat situ beza dia, dia punya explosion lagi besar and it forms a huge bubble of plasma radiation particle from the sun. So uh, CME occurs when sun, the sun's magnetic field lines suddenly reorganize exploding into space. So um, Uh, kemudian ada yang tanya saya apa beza dengan solar wind. So solar flare, uh, solar flare yang kadang-kadang followed by CME ni, solar flare occurs, uh, re, solar flare is related to the sun cycle. So dia occur dalam 11 tahun sekali macam tu lah. But solar wind occurs due to the fact that coro, apa, due to the expansion of corona that release energized proton and electron. So Uh, corona ni sentiasa expand. Jadi solar wind ni sentiasa berlaku lah. Okay, it frequently occurs. But, bukan sentiasa sorry. It, uh, it occurs frequently compared to solar flare. Solar flare ni dia related dengan sun cycle. So it might occur around 11 years macam tu lah. Sebab sun cycle is uh, 11 years. Okay, sekejap ya. So untuk mereka yang belum jawab lagi. Okay, this is... Uh, apa uh, attach here is the answer lah. So uh, from apa top left tiga dua bottom left empat satu. Okay from the left. Okay now we are going to discuss about uh, the earth magnetosphere. The earth magnetosphere ni is made possible due to the presence of the earth magnetic field. So In order to discuss further about uh, uh, earth magnetosphere, kita kena faham dululah magnet, uh, earth magnetic field ni apa. Sekejap ya. I have the video here. So I have to open. I have to open your student, the student presentation. Because it is attached to your. Um, it is attached to your slide also. Alright, kejap ya. So, kita tengok video ni dulu. Lepas tu saya akan uh, explain further ya. No one has ever taken the journey deep down to the heart of our planet, but by studying the way shockwaves from earthquakes travel through the planet, scientists have worked out its likely structure. So now we know that our planet's magnetic field is generated deep down in the Earth's core. Earth's magnetic field is caused by a dynamo effect. The outer core of Earth is liquid metal fluid motion there generates electric currents. 
the motion of the fluid is sustained by convection and driven by buoyancy. When the Earth spins on its axis, it makes the electric currents to form a magnetic field that extends around the planet. If the whole mass of the Earth was solid, there wouldn't be as much of an electric field. A similar example of the dynamo effect is the dynamo light on a bike. When you pedal the bike, magnets in the dynamo start spinning, therefore creating an electric current which turns on the light. And did you know, Earth's magnetic field is 3.5 billion years old and since then it has shielded every life form on Earth from the sun's harmful cosmic radiation. Okay, so based on the video that we have just observed, uh, we have just observed, so the earth magnetic field is formed due to the, uh, apa, lebih kurang due to the geodynamo effect lah. So, uh, apa, uh, it is also known as the geomagnetic field that extends from the earth interior out into the space that extends from the north. Kamu kalau kamu tengok arrow tu, uh, the magnetic field arah dia ialah from the north to the south. Okay, so uh, due to the formation of the earth magnetic field, um, we, uh, apa as mentioned by the video, the earth magnetic field uh, protect us from the harmful rays or the harmful effects of solar wind and other radiation from the sun. So, um, when our magnet, the earth magnetic field reacted at our um, apa, um, atau uh, connected atau uh, nak kata apa ya, dia uh, bertindih, okay, bertindih at Uh, bertindih antara the earth magnetic field bertindih dengan uh, magnetic field in the region of outer space kita panggil that particular region as the magnetosphere um, and then um, uh, it is formed by the interaction between the magnetic field brought by the solar wind and earth magnetic field lah so kat, tadi disebut uh, magnetosphere ni is the region where apa bila Earth magnetic field ni bertindih dengan magnetic field in the region of outer space. So, magnetic field region of outer space ni dibawa oleh siapa? Dibawa oleh solar wind. So, let's take a look at uh, this video that shows how the earth magnetosphere works. Sekejap ya, saya mute dulu. Our sun is constantly blasting huge amounts of hot plasma out into space. All those charged particles have a big effect on everything in their path. So what's protecting Earth from the solar wind and solar storms? Earth's thick atmosphere provides some defense, scattering and absorbing solar particles before they reach the surface. But our planet also has a secret weapon, a strong magnetic field it projects into space mostly generated by molten iron alloys moving in Earth's outer core. The area of space where the magnetic field interacts with the solar wind is called Earth's magnetosphere. Its shape constantly changes as it's bombarded by solar particles. As positively charged protons and negatively charged electrons enter the magnetosphere, most of them are deflected around Earth, long before they reach the atmosphere. The magnetosphere really gets tested when big solar storms, carrying more plasma and traveling at higher speeds, are on a collision course with Earth. While most of the plasma is deflected, some of it gets trapped in the magnetosphere and funnels back toward Earth along field lines emanating from the poles. As charged particles from the sun collide with nitrogen and oxygen molecules in our atmosphere, they create the cosmic light shows known as auroras. The bigger the storm, the further from the poles auroras can be seen. 
Some storms are so big, they interfere with satellites, cause planes to alter their routes, and can create other problems. The vast majority of the time, these inconveniences are pretty minor. But the next time the solar version of a perfect storm overwhelms Earth's magnetic shield, we might not be so lucky. Okay, so um, based on the video, and uh, as you can see from the diagram provided here, um, the Earth magnetosphere, the shape of the Earth magnetosphere, is influenced by the presence of solar wind. As we can see here, um, we can see from the diagram and from the video, uh, we can take note on how the solar wind of charged particles blows, uh, quote unquote blows lah, lebih kurang tiup, bukan tiup sebenarnya, tapi uh, apa, uh, sort of blows through the, to the magnetic field outward dan uh, the shape of the magnetosphere tu rupa dia lebih kurang macam angin yang masuk dalam wind sock. So saya letak gambar wind sock kat situ in case kalau kamu tak tahu. Uh, if you go through uh, our highways, uh, dia akan bagi reminder, okay awas ini adalah kawasan angin lintang and then dia ada wind sock kat situ. Wind sock juga kita boleh nampak dekat area lapangan terbang kan. So the shape of the earth magnetosphere can is influenced by solar wind and when it is influenced by solar wind, the shape tu jadi bentuk macam angin yang masuk ke dalam wind sock macam tu ya. Alright. So um, based on the video and also based on what you have read uh, before, can you list at least one importance of magnetosphere? Can you list at least one importance of magnetosphere? Okay, I can see many ideas here. Yes, um, yes, to protect uh, the earth organism from getting in contact with harmful solar wind uh, from the sun which carry plasmatic particles. Then kalau kita tengok kat situ, uh, alpha particles, elekt apa, electron particles kan, 
uh, all apa uh, all uh, ionizing radiation that can cause harmful health effects kepada kita lah kan uh, okay and then uh, basically dia jadi biological shield pula kat situ kan okay basically lah secara asasnya dia jadi biological shield Sekejap ya, saya besarkan sikit supaya saya nampak semua jawapan. Alright, and then uh, antara idea lain juga kat sini yang saya dapat baca ialah uh, Okay, um, uh, yes, uh, essentially it blocks charged particles from the sun lah such as electron, proton and alpha particles, betul juga. Sama macam uh, jadi biological shield lah. So uh, kalau ada excessive number of charge particles ni nanti akan disrupt macam-macam lah pada kita punya livelihood seperti telecommunication, navigation system and electrical power lines. And also it reduce the pressure exerted by solar wind on the earth atmosphere. Uh, yeah, so essentially Uh, that is what you are saying lah. Sama ada dia jadi biological shield atau reduces the effect on the earth atmosphere. Okay. Dia jadi biolo biological shield sebab prevent us from being exposed to harmful radiation and so on and so forth lah. Alright. Thank you for your submissions. Very good ideas. Okay, so kita dah tahu, kamu dah senaraikan importance of the earth magnetosphere. So I would like to show you a, a movie clip uh, depicting a scenario when the earth magnetosphere can no longer... Uh, <coughs> Okay, sebentar ya. Uh, okay, so based on the video that you have observed, can you uh, share your opinions? What are some of the effects of what are some of the effects of um, the that you have observed. What are some of the effects that you have observed, yeah? Alright. Okay. Oh, I can see some other yang sebut global crisis ya. Ah, uh, kejap ya. Eh. Uh, kenapa saya tak boleh assign Nevin Deep ya? Eh? I'm currently trying to assign uh, breakout rooms. But I cannot assign Nevin Deep. Kenapa ya? Sebab Nevin Deep pun pakai MOE kan? Kejap ya. Eh. Saya tak nampak kat sini. Hmm. Why ya? Ah? I want uh, after this I have a breakout room session but I cannot assign Nervin Deep to a specific um uh, to a specific apa nama? Specific room. Kejap ya. Ah uh, ni dulu. Nervin Deep pakai personal email eh. Are you there, Nevin Deep? Eh, ni macam. Weh, MOE ya? Alright, alright, alright. Hmm, pelik lah kenapa dia tak bagi ya. Oh, oh. Oh. Up, breakout rooms. Nevin Deep is group 3. 
Beef. Hmm, kenapa ya dia tak bagi? Macam pelik. Oh, I... Hmm. Okay, tak apa. I think I know the solution. Okay, so uh, I can see some of your ideas here. Uh, okay, uh, ada yang observe ada disturbance in electrical appliances kan? Uh, ada yang... Uh, ada yang nampak uh, changes in terms of uh, climate change, eh, uh, yeah, sudden climate change due sebab dia observe dekat situ ada formation of very strong winds, uh, widespread fire, kan? Um, and then, um, ya, yeah, global crisis sebab semua orang pun panik, uh, apa cuaca terlalu panas dan sebagainya. Hmm. Okay, so I give you another minute to uh, share your observations. Nanti kita move to the next part. Eh? Um, hmm, kan me memang if you watch the movie from uh, from the start, memang ditunjuklah a major change in climate. Um, forest fire occurs more frequently and then um, several aeroplanes uh, cannot function and suddenly drop down from, uh, apa, uh, bukan suddenly drop down, cannot land due to the interference in navigation system. Jadi terhempas lah kan sebab navigation system tak, ber, uh, tak berfungsi kan. Uh, dan macam-macam lagi lah. So, tapi towards uh, in the, apa, in that particular movie clip, uh, kita boleh tengok lah uh, towards the end tu jadi apa. Alright. Okay, ya. Yeah. So, sorry for, uh, apa, locking the screen. Okay, boleh tulis lagi sikit lagi? Nak habiskan? Yes, yeah, satellite interference. Nak tengok TV pun tak boleh, ya. Yeah. Ni memang cerita lama lah. Sebab, apa, TV pun TV CRT lagi, ya. Yeah. Flat screen TV pun tak ada lagi masa tu, movie tu. Hmm. Alright. Okay, thank you so much for your... Um, sharing. Uh, as you can see here, um, apa, uh, the, the, even though we have the earth magnetospheres, but we also need to be vigilant. Uh, we need also, we need to be, or, apa, we need to prepare and observe the space weather to prepare for any possible interferences uh, to our navigation system, to our telecommunication system uh, and electrical power lines. So, several government bodies have um, have, pro, apa, have uh, specific agencies that do just that lah, yang observe space weather, observe uh, different phenomena in the outer space and help to guide and provide advice to various services on how to prepare for the changes in the space weather. For example, jom kita tengok video yang seterusnya ni. Okay, for the uh, for example, uh, this is uh, an excerpt 
uh, that introduces the function of Space Weather Prediction Center. Jom kita tengok macam mana Space Weather Prediction Center ni berfungsi. Technology. It's the rhythm of our everyday life. We're more dependent on satellite and communication systems than at any other time in history. Disruptions can affect our economy and even our safety. To prepare for the effects of such events and minimize impacts, we need to look outside our atmosphere, some 93 million miles away, at a star we call the Sun. It's our main energy source. It warms the Earth and grows our food. While the sun and the space between may seem pleasant from our perspective, it's anything but peaceful. At its surface exists a chaotic state of eruptions and radiation. And unlike Vegas, what happens at the sun doesn't stay at the sun. Space weather is essentially emissions from the sun, uh, radiation, magnetic field that erupts from the solar surface, pumped out into space, sometimes right towards Earth. When it impacts the Earth, it impacts our technology. That's what we call space weather. These solar events and their effects at Earth can disrupt systems we take for granted. From causing blackouts to the power grid, to delaying offshore drilling operations due to inaccurate GPS data. Interference with communication systems can force air traffic to reroute and impact rescue response and coordination. Outside our atmosphere, solar radiation can harm astronauts and the systems they depend on. The good news is that these eruptions can be detected early. Forecasters at the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado, have their eyes on the sun at all times. The Space Weather Prediction Center is part of the National Weather Service and is very much like a normal weather forecast office. We're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're looking at data, we're looking at imagery, we're looking at model outputs. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches of imminent activity to our customers so they can take action. In many ways, forecasting space weather is a lot like forecasting hurricanes. Those who rely on space weather forecasts, like electric power grid managers, are informed early on and can begin taking protective action. When we see an eruption on the sun, space weather forecasters will issue a watch. And this is much like a hurricane watch. When a hurricane sits offshore of Miami, for example, perhaps 48 hours out, we too can see way in advance that something may be coming towards the Earth. As the storm moves toward us, it hits a monitoring spacecraft orbiting a million miles away from Earth. It's kind of our, our buoy sitting out there offshore and that hurricane about 30, 45 minutes before it makes landfall, we'll get the measurements from the buoy. That's what the spacecraft does for us. That big eruption that left the sun hits the spacecraft. Now we've got the measurements of exactly what's going to impact us here on Earth. And we issue the warnings to give the power grid a heads up that the storm is now imminent. An interesting element to this whole process is that when the forecasters issue the alert, the power grid receives the alert, takes the necessary actions to protect the grid, the average citizen never knows anything ever happened. The number of customers who rely on space weather information continues to grow. As our reliance on technology increases, so will our need for constant monitoring of the sun. Okay, so um, 
we can see that from the video that the data on space weather can be used to analyze and forecast when CME occurs in the sun and determine the reason for the occurrences of solar flare and CME on the surface of the sun and uh, advise the service providers on uh, the upper on uh, the impending CME atau solar flare yang mungkin occur and prepare, uh, apa, make suitable preparations and so on and so forth lah. So, um, we know that it is essential to observe and interpret data on space weather because of its adverse effects uh, on the uh, on our, apa, on various aspects of our life lah. So, as we can see here, okay, uh, abaikan yang group 1 sampai 7 kat bawah tu ya. So, uh, dalam kita punya, um, dalam kita punya textbook, there is one activity that we can do to further understand the effects of space weather on earth. So, uh, this activity is based on activity 9.3, page 264, tak silap saya dalam textbook. Uh, for this particular activity, we have to work in groups to gather information regarding the effects of space weather on the earth. Uh, dalam uh, apa, sama ada whether it is a good effect, uh, macam good effect atau effect yang cantik macam the presence of aurora atau disturbance to telecommunication, navigation system and as well as electrical system. Bila telecommunication tu ada banyak aspects. Dari segi uh, telecommunication antara uh, apa telecommunication an, apa related to the internet connection ke atau related to telephone communication ke atau regarding navigation system uh, for apa GPS for example atau navigation system in different uh, apa different air transport land transport or water transport as well as electrical power lines so in your group discuss and share the information gathered and you will present the outcome on this friday so uh, saya bagi maklumat dulu uh, untuk presentation pada hari jumaat ni dia punya format macam mana um, pertama sekali prepare a in your group based on what you have gathered prepare a 3 minute presentation choosing by choosing any platform you can use canva you can use powerpoint flipgrid uh, kalau ada yang nak guna padlet pun boleh tak ada masalah ya and then um, you can also include a quiz or activity to assess your audience understanding and this presentation is due on Friday at 7.30 a.m. So, uh, saya hantar juga uh, panduan ini ke dalam uh, apa, saya hantar juga panduan ni dalam kamu punya uh, telegram, sekejap ya, saya hantar sekarang. So, prepare uh, sebentar lagi saya akan buat breakout room. So, uh, this breakout room, saya bentuk breakout rooms ni based on uh, e-magazine group sebelum ni lah. Cuma with a bit of changes. For example, uh, Raja Nur Alisha saya bawa pergi ke group 3 sebab Amrina tak ada hari ni. Uh, lepas tu Luz Haikal saya uh, pindahkan kamu pergi ke group 6 sebab uh, ahli kelas uh, ahli group kamu pun tak ada hari ni ya. So um, I will start the breakout rooms. Uh, semua group akan pergi breakout room masing-masing kecuali group 3. Group 3 akan stay dalam main call ini sebab saya tak boleh nak assign Nervin Deep. So Nervin Deep dalam group 3 kan. So, uh, group 3 iaitu uh, Nurin, Amita, Nervindi, Sadia, Majila dan juga Rajinul Alisha. Hari ni Sadia dengan Majila tak ada. So, Rajinul Alisha akan masuk dalam group 3. You will stay in the main call while the rest will go to your breakout room to discuss on which platform that you want to discuss, uh, you want to use and then um, up uh, and a brief overview what you want to do uh, 
for your presentation. You can use the whiteboard function. Whiteboard pula. Whiteboard eh istilah dia kejap eh. Saya tengok balik. Uh, yes, whiteboarding. Ha. Whiteboarding function in each of your uh, group uh, to present atau to discuss your answer. Yeah? So, semua orang akan masuk breakout room kecuali Amita, Nurin, Raja Nur Alisha dengan Dan Windip. You stay in this call. Yeah? Alright, I open the rooms now. So, you can join. Okay, untuk group 3, okay, kejap. Untuk group 